Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the orphan of Makkah will adopt the entire world. You remember the topic of the, the convention? The orphan who adopted the entire world? So this is the second part which I'm going to talk about. All of us we know that on the day of judgment, when people are going to be waiting for Isaac and Kitab, and the sun is going to be so close that everybody is going to be filled with their sweat. And all of us we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Surah Hajj that the Fazza the pangs of the day of judgment are truly horrible. And we are told that in Nasiya Siruna Yoman Piyama the Yusan Kuna Umajun Tatpa Ulamiha Yapurun Yapuran Ishka Yapuran Ishka. The famous hadith that people will go to Sidina Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and Sidina Adam will request them, no, I made a mistake when I disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the jannah. So I have got no courage to go. They will go to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. The hadith is famous. But then at the end, everybody will say, go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Ana laha, Ana laha, I will go, I will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has given me this respect. And then Rasulullah sallam will prostrate in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Irfa rasa, was al -tuhati. Raise your head, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and ask, you will be given. And at that time, Rasulullah sallam, will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the Isaac and Kitab. So this is going to be a Shafa'at al-Ufma, which is going to be including Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Every Prophet will be owned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know, this is the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallam and Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا سيد ولد آدم يوم القيامة ولا فقر وبيتي لباء الحمد ولا فقر وما من نبي يوم عيد آدم فمن سواه إلا تحت لبائي وأنا أفضل من تنشط عنه الأرض ولا فقر This is what is the meaning of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in which he said I am the chief of all the human beings I am سيد of everybody who come to this existence. And on the day of judgment, I will carry the flag of the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no Nabi from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam till the time of Rasulullah sallam will be having their ummah separate. Everybody will come under the niwa, under the flag of Rasulullah sallam because Rasulullah sallam is the one who is going to go and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the hisab and kitab and after that every Nabi will have their own ummah and this is what is the greatest honor that that one individual, the orphan of Makkah who does not have anything of this dunya for his own self but he has got everything for his existence including all the anbiya and the salihin and the shuhada. The second type of shifa is going to be also when people of the Hisab and Kitab has started. Now people are standing at Sirah. As you know, that everybody has to cross the star, the Sirah. And Sirah is such a thin bridge that many of the people are going to be butchered there and under it is the hellfire. And Rasulullah Sallam explained that for 500 years distance is the time for like the Akhina or belief system. Next 500 years for Salah. Next 500 years for Zakah. Next 500 years for Saul, fasting and Hajj. Some of the people who have made mistake in their Salah will go to the hellfire, pay for their mistakes and then come up and then they will have to cross the place of Zakah. Those people who compromise in zakat will end up in the hellfire, pay for their mistakes and then come up and cross the fasting. And after the ibadah are taken care of, 
There are certain areas which are meant for mu'amala, human interactions. The way we treat other people, the way we behave with other people. So some of the people will go in the hellfire for that. So people are waiting for their rights to cross over. This is the second place where Rasulullah Sallallahu will own the Salihin of the entire existence. He will request Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Ya Allah, those of the servants of yours who do not have much of Hisab and Kitab, their Salawat are complete, their Zakat is complete, their Mu'abalat are complete, Ya Allah, get them to Jannah without Hisab and Kitab. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will accept the Shafa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even the Salihin, who have done all of the Hisab and Kitab and MashaAllah, all of the Mu'abalat, they will own it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and because of his ownership, because of his shafa intercession, they will enter the Jannah while everybody else is waiting for Sirah. The third time that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to come and intercede is on behalf of his Ummah, especially those people who have seen Allah and Allah has become wajib upon them. They have been assigned to hellfire. These are the people who have mixed the good with the bad deeds. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede on their behalf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and take them to Jannah and forgive them from the punishment. And the fourth thing, and I'm going to come back and explain all of that from the Ahadith, is that when Muslims who have compromised on so many things from the Hakida sometimes to Ibadah to Mu'amadah and they are in the pit of hellfire. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and all of the Salihin and all of the Anbiya have been blessed to enter Jannah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has been honored to reach at Maqab al As you know the famous ayah of the Quran after the salat and the blue of the sun to the sun of the sun and the Quran of the Fajr in the Quran of the Fajr is the Prophet and from the sun of the sun to the sun of the sun to the sun and the sun of the sun to the sun of the sun to the sun Rasulullah Sallam was assigned the sixth obligatory prayer which is the Hajj and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says do the Hajj to Muhammad Sallam during the night Asa what? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will bless you with Maqami Mahmood, the highest place in Jannah. And when some, some of the Sahaba, the Aus Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah what is this Maqami Mahmood that you keep on asking us to ask for you? That after each azan, we make the dua, Allahumma Rafa Hazi Ta'wa, and then Maqami Mahmood and Al-Basira. The Prophet said, this is going to, going to be the highest place after the Asha Rahmat, after the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest place after that is going to be Maqab al-Mahmood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor me and bless me with that one. That I will be the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and highest among the categories of human beings. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor Rasulullah sallam to reach to that place, you know what is going to be? The begging of Rasulullah Sallam as soon as he will be assigned with that honor, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Allah, still there are some people from my Ummah who are in the hellfire. And when Rasulullah Sallam would cry in Jannah, at that time, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala was said, and the Ahadith explained that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the intercession of Rasulullah Sallam. Even for anybody who said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or who did not commit the shirk. So imagine wala sawfa yu'adhi ka rabbuka khatarda. One time this hadith is from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said and also Abdullah bin Amr bin Naas radiallahu ta'ala anna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ta'ala qawla qawla allahi azza wa jalti ibrahim alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam رب إنهم لا أبدا لك كثيرا من الناس فمن تبعني فإنه مني ومن عصاني فإنك غفور رحيم وطلعه العيسى عليه الصلاة والسلام 
ان تغفر لهم ان تعذبهم فانهم عباد وان تغفر لهم فانك انت العزيز الحكيم you need to know the background of both of these ayah and then i'll go to the next part of the hadith you know sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam how many sacrifices he has made for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala born in the family kicked down by his own father then basically from iraq to syria to palestine to egypt and then dies in palestine and basically he is the one who has established both of the kaabas by the mothers as well as the kaabas so after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned him to build kaabatullah he makes this dua wa isqala ibrahim rabbi ja'al hadha al-balada amina wa yurni wa baniya an na'buda al-islam he makes the dua for the people of makkah and for his children his project And then he says, "Rabbi, inna huna adlan na kafira min al nas." Ya Allah, from my children, some of these will be pushed. Some of them are going to be the people who will use this cow for the sake of worship of other than you. Inna huna adlan na kafira min al nas. From the Tabi'ani, from the Nabi. My dua to you is my request to you is that whosoever follows me in my blessing is from me. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And whosoever disobeys me basically moves away from this message Ya Allah, I'm not going to ask you punish them but I'm not going to take the responsibility for them They are your servant If you want to forgive them, please forgive them So there's kind of indirect request of forgiveness Same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wassalam Wa izhala Allah ya Isa ibn Maryam Ahanta hudda minna sittakhiduni wa ummi ya ilahini min duni Allah Qala subhanaka ma yakunu li an akula ma li sanihi haq And the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Isa alayhi salatu wassalam For Isa alayhi salatu wassalam Did you ask the followers or the people To worship you and your mother as gods other than me? And you know the da'ala, Isa alayhi salatu wassalam will say, Ya Allah, as long as I was there, I told them to worship one God. فَرَمَّا تَوَفَيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ رَقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ إِنْ تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُهُمْ وَإِنْ تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَفِيمُ Ya Allah, when you cause me to die, you know what they did after me. If you want to punish them, these are your servants. And if you want to forgive them, then you are a forgiver. So he will not have the courage to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the people. But Rasulullah sallam, when he read these two ayah, فَرَفَ يَدَيْهِ وَقَالَ اللَّهُمَّ أُمَّتِي اللَّهُمَّ أُمَّتِي وَبَكَى Rasulullah sallam, when he read these ayah, he went to Sarda and started crying. Sahaba Rikman Allah alayhi wa ta'ala saw him crying. And sing, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Allah, my Ummah, Ya Allah, my Ummah. Jibril alayhi salatu salam king, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows why Rasulullah salam is crying, but he wants to teach the Muslims. So Jibril alayhi salatu salam asked him, why are you crying so bad? The Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, my Ummah, my Ummah, I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive Allah. So Jibril alayhi salatu salam went back, and came with this ayah and wala sawfa yu'atika rabbuka fatawka that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will soon make you very well pleased about your ummah inna salurdika fi ummatik wala nasuwa we will make you pleased about your ummah and we will not hurt your feeling or will not disappoint you ya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brothers and sisters the reason I'm trying to explain these ahadith of Rasulullah sallam is to share this pain with you that we are the followers of that prophet who not only worry about his own self his own family his own disciples or sahaba his own ummah but he worry about the entire existence actually I was reading one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallam and I was truly astonished He said, "Na ashfa anna yom al-tiyama." On the day of judgment, 
I am going to intercede on behalf of more people than the plants upon this earth and then the stones or the rocks upon this earth. Imagine, your Rasul or my Rasul, he is going to be interceding and taking so many people in Jannah that the earth has not witnessed the numbers. And you have seen now that the prophets, the messengers, the sinful people, the people who have got even said one time La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah are going to be on the good books of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is going on with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that we have become so exclusive? We do not forgive each other. We do not forgive our family. We do not forgive our brothers and sisters. We are so, so in rush to exclude people from Jannah. This is Sufi. So because this is Sufi, so this is Bidah, so there is no place for him in Jannah. This person is Astaghfirullah Salafi. He is too dry. He keeps on making everybody halal and haram. So there is no room for dinner. This person is the Hariri. This person is such and such. This person. If you look at our discussions, if you look at the discussions of different type of fatwas, wallah halal and haram, and as if we do not want any person to enter Jannah. And as if we have got no concern, no compassion, no love for anybody. There is so much jealousy going on among us that even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so much, we still keep an eye upon somebody else's, why he has got it, why he should have it, even though I have got more than anybody else. And this is what is the definition of hasr, that a person is not only looking something for himself or herself, that person wants everything away from the other person so that nobody can come equal to me. So the problem with us is, astaghfirullah, we are using deen to exclude people. We are using fatwas to hurt people. We are using the Habib والسلام, and his name to hurt people and to kill other people. How many people are killed in our Muslim countries just because somehow they are perceived to have even uttered or said something against Rasulullah This is what we call Tawheed Rizal, apostasy. How many people are killed just because of the fatwa, because Astaghfirullah, this is bid'ah, and how many people are being killed in the masajid? They come to offer Salat al Jummah, but because they differ in the fifty school of thought from this group, or they do not assign themselves, Astaghfirullah, in election to this group's agenda, or somehow, Nauz Bidah Mizarik, Nauz Bidah Mizarik, they are interpreting some verses of the Quran, or a hadith of Rasulullah Sallam, different than that person or that group. So they give the fatwa that their blood is halal for them. So destroy them, kill them, do whatever you want to do. And unfortunately, this is not the situation right now. Wallahi, when you go back to history, I mean, you see some of our religious brothers and scholars and, 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 and our, our, our ulama, just the, I mean, there's no respect for human life, for human dignity. Killing in the name of religion, or Astaghfirullah, destroying people's property and honor and dignity has been part and parcel of some segments of our religiosity. And look at Rasulullah Sallam, that orphan who is adopting the entire world. And actually, there's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallam, that every Nabi has got da'wah and mustajab. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me, O oh, Muhammad Sallam, ask me something which I will give it to you right away. As the Kulli Nabi in Da'wati Ka Da'abiha Fi Ummatihi Wa Khabbaktu Da'wati Shafa'atan Li Ummati Yom Al Qiyam That every Nabi was given one dua which will be respected, honored right away. And most of the Anbiya, they made this dua for their family, for their children, for their followers. And when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asked him that one dua, the Prophet said, I kept it on my ummah and I will ask on the day of um, judgment so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not disappoint me regarding my ummah. Rasulullah has made so many duas. Some of them were accepted 
And some of them were rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. But when he promised him, ask me one thing, I will not reject it. Rasulullah sallam kept on saying, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati. And here, we, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallam, are not letting even our own brothers and sisters who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, to come and join us in the same masjid. Or to let them live in this existence. Or we exclude everybody, this whole phenomena of takfir. Kufr, 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 subhanallah. And here we see in the ahadith of Rasulullah sallam, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that even the person who said one time la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and did not commit shirk, the only condition is that he or she did not commit the shirk in his or her life. If that person is in Jahannam, the Prophet said even in Jannah, I will keep on crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until that person of my ummah is brought out of the pain and the anxiety of the empire and brought into Jannah. And this is what is Namadada has in Ayah. When this Ayah came, when I saw the Yawati, the Rabbu Kaftarda, Kala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Izzar wallahi la arda wa wahidu min ummati fila. When this Ayah came, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you, soon please you, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah is going to please me, then Allah, I will not be pleased, I will not be satisfied even if one person of my ummah is still in the Al-Fatih. Subhanallah. Look at the time of the message we are getting from our Habib al-Salaam and look at the way the Muhammadan or the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa have become famous in the world that astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, even the name of Habib al-Salaam has become the terrorist, the violent, the pedophile and all of those things just because of the way we are treating the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa astaghfirullah wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa astaghfiru inna hu wa al-Fakuru rahim. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu wa ala rasulillah. All of us we know that the massacre is taking place in Syria. There are so many Muslims who are being butchered around the world and now if you look into the news, you will see that some of the Muslims are burned alive in Rangoon, Burma, or Myanmar. Last week, they burned more than seven masjid and so many Islamic madrasas. And some of the children who were studying Quran or memorizing Quran inside those madrasas were burned alive. But unfortunately, the media over here is not giving any kind of coverage. If somebody from the Christian world or somebody from America is either astaghfirullah injured or done anything wrong or is killed the whole America is upset down because one American was killed whether it's the ambassador or just one common person but you see thousands and thousands of people being killed in Syria and the media is not covered hundreds and thousands are being displaced in Burma and hundreds of them are being killed every day and you will not see or you will not hear anything from the media or from the government. But this is also the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one who was so much worried about their safety in this world that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives a witness لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ عَلِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ مَا عَلِيمٌ حَلِيسٌ عَلِيمٌ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ That the Rasul which we have sent to you he is really suffering when he sees the suffering of a believer or a Muslim. And he is pleased when he sees a Muslim please. Man sarna Musliman, fakat sarrani. Wa man sarrani, fakat sarra Allah. The person who pleases a Muslim pleases me. And the person who pleases me pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, my brothers and sisters, the pains of the Muslims, the suffering of the people in Burma should be in our mind. We should worry about them like we worry about everybody else. Include them in your dua. Also, write to the people or do something where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts you as the people who really share the pain of the people of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina bin ladunka rahmatan lahi ibn alabi amrina rashara. Allahumma ja'anna bin aladheena yastabi'oona al-qawla fi yattabi'oona ahsana. 
اللهم افتح لنا وانت خير الفاتحين اللهم اغفر لنا وانت خير الغافرين اللهم ارحمنا وانت خير الراحمين اللهم ارزقنا وانت خير الرازقين اللهم احفظنا وانت خير الحافظين اللهم اهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونجعلنا منهم واخزر من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن اعتدنا معه اللهم انصر عبادك المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك المتهادين في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا انصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك يا مولانا قريب مجيب سميع الدعوات يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ولذكر الله اكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاه